Hi, it's Jason again from Fraser Valley Rose Farm. Here I am, beautiful day, mid-January. It's minus five outside, but it's beautiful in here. So nice, in fact, that I have to have the greenhouse door open to keep it working temperatures. What I'm working on is another thing to do with my greenhouse benches. So I made a video last week where I talked about how to use, or why I used greenhouse benches for all of my young plants. One thing I left out of that was one special purpose that I used the benches for, and I'll be modifying one of the benches today to do that. That's using it for greenhouse heating, or uh, bench heating, for uh, propagating seeds and, uh, and cuttings more easily. Um, <clears throat> so a little bit of insight here, a lot of the larger greenhouse operations, they use other systems like a boiler that uh, radiates water underneath the tables to try to get heat underneath the table. It's such a benefit to new seedlings and new cuttings. Unfortunately for a small grower like me, that doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm not going to have a boiler out in my greenhouses. I'm not going to run the risk of freezing. I just don't have enough benches or need enough space to make that make sense. So what I was looking for is a solution that could do that same purpose or function but do it in a small space where I could do maybe 15, 20 trays uh, per table and rotate them through to start all of my seedling crops. And it's a relatively easy thing to do. The main thing you're trying to do is you just have, you want to have a heat source underneath the plants. The problem is you want to do it in as efficient a way as you can without wasting a bunch of electricity or, or heat. Uh, and you want to direct it to your seedlings in a way that's controlled so you don't overheat that you don't uh, waste a bunch of energy. So uh, what I'll do is I'll show you what I'm going to be using for that on this bench. It's slightly different than the other benches, uh, but it's built on the same template. So I'm using the same bottom, same legs. I still have that copper band across the bottom to try to keep slugs off the tables, uh, but I'll be using some other materials on it to try to uh, keep the temperature where I want it to be. Okay, and speaking of materials, these are them, or most of what I'll be using to modify my bench. So I'm starting with the base of the bench itself. You'll notice on this one that I haven't put the wire mesh across the top. It's just open on the top. And over here I have some materials I'll be using to modify that for my heated bench. Here across the bottom I'm going to have some plywood just for support. On top of that I have this um, insulation with the foil on the one side, so it's got that, uh, I don't know if you can see it in the video here, but it's got the reflective foil on one side. For the sides, I'm going to be using this hardboard insulation, quite firm, so it's uh, not so susceptible to breaking, and I don't know if I'll use this yet or not, but this is, uh, I picked this up at the hardware store as well, and it's just a foil that I'm think considering wrapping around the inside to try to keep some of that temperature inside. So I actually have one of these built in a slightly different fashion in the other greenhouse and it's not that far away so maybe I'll sneak over there right now to show you what I've got. Excuse the mess, this is just the way my second greenhouse looks in between growing seasons. And here's version 1.0 and currently I'm not using it to start seeds or to stick cuttings uh, it's actually in use right now just trying to overwinter some young cuttings from last year that we rooted last year and as you can see it's built on the same base as the other benches but what I've done is I've uh, put the insulation around the outside to try to keep the heat where I want it and underneath I have one of those foil barriers as well. Inside of the bench and to try to raise the temperature what I'm using as a heat source is just a heating cable, soil heating cable that you can get online just from Amazon or that kind of thing. It's just a, a, a plain heating cable like that. The new bench that I'm going to be building will have a cable that's twice that length and uses twice as much electricity. So it should be able to keep that bench a little bit warmer. This one here just manages to keep the temperature of the soil above the greenhouse temperature. So I don't know if I mentioned, but it's minus five outside right now. The plants that I have on this bench over here, if I knock them out of their pot, easily enough done, it's actually solid. Uh, I'm going to say it's it's thawing because it's been 
warm outside today or warm with the solar gain. But here on this bench, I'm going to, I don't know if I can show you that, but it's not frozen solid. It moves quite easily inside the pot. So two pots directly across the aisle from each other, one on an unheated bench, frozen solid, one on the heated bench, still uh, maintaining above zero temperatures, which for a lot of plants can make the difference between living and dying. So back to the bench that I'm building now, I've just quickly cut it down to the length of the bench because the bench is seven feet long, whereas the plywood came in an eight foot section. So now I'm going to pin that down with screws and I'll be on to the next step just to put down that first layer of insulation. I've screwed down the plywood now and it makes a nice firm substrate for the rest of it here. The next layer I'm going to put down is this foam insulation and it's a light density foam insulation with a foil top on it. And before I do that, I guess I'd like to discuss quickly some of my thoughts on why I designed this the way I did. Now, some people design by placing a light source down here. Now, the um, they can either have rope lights strung along on the bottom or they can have uh, light bulbs and there's nothing wrong with doing it that way uh, but this is where i fall back on reading on wikipedia about he how heat moves in things and um, it moves three different ways it moves by uh, conduction convection and radiation it, in order to avoid heat loss or to put it where i want it the best i want to have it not go other places. Convection is the main culprit there. So if I have light bulbs down here, the heated air around it will start to escape and it will come up against the bottom of the bench, but what it will also do is come out this way. It has a way to travel and has some ways to get lost. What some people do is they'll put a skirt on the bench down to the bottom or enclose that somehow and that's fine too that's just a different approach than what I'm doing here the second way you can lose heat there is that radiation and so whenever imagine you're looking through infrared uh, camera you see that glow on things that's uh, infrared uh, radiation moving out from the object and there's very little you can do to stop that except to put up a radiant barrier that's what this foil is on top of the insulation here is a radiant barrier to stop the heat from moving a direction you don't want it to by limiting down the convection so I've put the cables on top of the bench and by limiting down the radiation basically I've left only one other method for the heat to move which is direct conduction through the soil media or through in this case I'll be using sand and that's the way I've designed it the way that I did put the foam trimmed it down to size put it on the top here I don't really need to hold it down with anything because it'll be held down by the weight of the sand that I put down on top of it and the next step I'm going to use this uh, I guess roll insulation go around the outside edge here and just block off radiant heat from escaping from the outside here. So, so I'm just trimming down this final layer of hardboard insulation here and with an X-Acto knife you can just trim these to the dimensions you want and once you've made a good slice down into it and you've gone deep enough you can just use insulation and snap it to make a clean slice where you want it okay so you can see that I've finished putting the film around the outside here and the final step of building the holder for the sand here is to put on this firm board insulation I just cut. And I pinned it in the other side there. The screw that I'm using, it has a, a washer around it that's going to hold the insulation a little bit tighter against the, the side wall. And so all it's going to take now And not too tight. Don't want to crush the insulation as we go in. But now we've got a nice solid 
outside margin of the table here. I can fill this top portion with sand now. Uh, after I receive the heater, I'll just put the cables across the top and I'll show you that next step before I proceed. It's a couple days later now and the shipment has arrived from Amazon. This is our soil heating cable. The reason I chose to use this instead of, say, the rope lights that I've seen in other videos is this is thermostatically controlled and it's intended to be buried. So uh, I don't know the electrical safety end of things, but I assume that one that's uh, meant to be buried is safer than one that isn't meant to be buried. And the thermostatic thing is important because if it does warm up in the greenhouse here and this gets above the temperatures that's good for my plants, it's going to shut down. It's not going to overheat or cause a problem. So that's why I've chosen this. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it out on this table and uh, tape it down into the pattern it's going to be for even heat distribution. As you can see, we've taped down the heating cable onto the heating bench now. And uh, the pattern that I've used just uh, is kind of random in a way, but it's one big loop. And you have to make sure that, if you can, that there's no large spaces or dead spaces between the cable. But obviously the heat will disperse amongst the sand, uh, but we don't want to leave any dead spots on the, uh, on the table for heat. Try to make it as even as possible. The next thing we're going to do, and I've only taped it down just using painter's tape here, uh, because I don't need to actually hold it in place. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to scoop some sand on top of it. And that's going to hold the cable down and also uh, create a nice spot where I can put down my trays, even, and it's also going to share the heat amongst itself. So that's the goal now. I'll get that covered for you and uh, I'll maybe make one more video here where I show you how it actually heats up and what temperatures it gets to. Uh, for the seedlings and cuttings. Here's the completed bench. Sand in place holding down those cables and it's been running for in the range of two to three hours now so it should be starting to heat up inside there. Just to show you what that heating looks like now what I thought I'd do is I would take a quick heating measurement and just to be fair here I thought I'd compare it to our indoor in sorry in uh, greenhouse beds here the in-ground beds uh, it's been warm enough in the greenhouse here to get some heating. And you'll notice there's some crop residue down here. That's okay. All good for the soil eventually. I just wanted to get down to the basic soil here and give you a soil temperature reading. So turning this on here. This is just a, an infrared thermometer, a baby ear thermometer. 10.8 degrees is what I'm getting, which actually isn't bad considering middle of January. And just to make a comparison here to what I'm getting at the heated bench, I'm going to give myself a new reading right here. And almost 22 degrees. So that's like a, an 11 or 12 degree uh, difference just over the course of a couple of hours. I would expect this bench to bring it up to around 25 degrees pretty consistently and top out around 27 where it'll stop heating. Now, that's it finished and you know we built our other benches. Um, this was built onto the top of one of those and so excluding those costs, if I'm just talking about the plywood, the insulation, the heating cable, the sand and all that, your total costs for this were probably in the range of about $100. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. And if you have any comments, please leave them below.